This is Adam Want. I'm a professor and technologist at John Jay College of Criminal Justice, which is part of the City University of New York. Primarily, I teach courses that involve information security and technology's use in inspection and oversight. Today, I'm here with something a little mind-blowing to show my students. This is a package that just came in the mail from China, and in the package is something that's pretty cool. Let's take a look at it. In the package is a plastic bag, and if I open the plastic bag, I'll just dump everything out and we'll take a look at one thing at a time. The plastic bag is labeled SJW-0612. In the plastic bag we have a piece of sticky Velcro, which I'll put aside, a key ring, which I'll put aside. This is a cigarette uh, mini USB charger, so it's a 5 volt 1 amp output. Plug this into a, a vehicle cigarette lighter and you can plug a USB cable in to charge it. Also it comes with USB cables and an audio video cable. And what's in this bag, which is really cool, While this looks like an ordinary keychain uh, fob that you would see on a regular keychain, right up here what we actually have is a high definition video camera and microphone. On the sides we have a high definition data out, a reset, and we also have over here a micro SD card. So I'll throw a micro SD card in there. Let's take a look at this device and let's see what the different buttons do. The two buttons on the bottom are fake. You can't press them, they don't do anything. The two buttons up top operate the camera. The bottom button operates the power and puts it into standby mode, while the top button over here activates the video or takes a picture. To put the camera into standby mode and turn it on, hold down the bottom button. The yellow LED in the top left signifies it's in standby mode. Hold down the top button for about one second to put it into recording mode. It blinks to show you that it is in recording mode and then turns off the LED to go covert. At this point you have absolutely no idea that this is a high definition recording device. Very often I'll show these devices to my graduate students, and usually only one or two out of a hundred can pick up that it's a high definition video recorder. To stop the recording, hold down the button again, and the yellow light will signify that it's back in standby mode. Hold down the bottom button and it will turn off. As you see, this is stamped a number 18. A number 18 is a 720p high definition 1280 times 720 H264 AVC1 at 30 frames per minute. This records directly in an MOV format. The camera is 3 megapixels, records in a JPEG format at 2048 times 1538. The device could also be used as a mass storage device or a webcam at 640 times 480 by plugging it into the computer via USB. So here's a story for my students. It really shows how dangerous one of these devices could be. This story involves a, a burglar who went around burglarizing jewelry stores at night. He would actually go into them during the day with a device similar to this. It was one of the low definition cameras. The lower definition cameras recorded for much longer periods of time. They could actually record for hours at a time. So the burglar used to go to jewelry stores during the day with one of these in his hand and he would go make recordings of some of the jewelry and then go home, analyze it, and decide whether or not it was worth burglarizing that particular store. Well, this time, as the burglar was coming out of the store during the day, he was approached by two police officers who recognized him. They recognized him because he had an active warrant and he was known generally for burglarizing high-end jewelry stores. As the police officers approached him, he activated his keychain recording device, which recorded the entire interaction with the police. 
The police wound up arresting him for possession of burglar's tools, mainly a lockpick set he had in his jacket. They brought him back to the precinct and locked him up in a cell and then went into an evidence room to fill out paperwork. When they were in the evidence room filling out the paperwork, they had this keychain in their possession. They just thought it was the suspect's property. What they didn't realize is it was recording them the entire time. While filling out paperwork on the suspect, they, make, they made lots of jokes about the suspect. Some of the jokes being about his abilities as a burglar, other jokes being about his race. Well, they filled out the paperwork, they inventoried his property, put it in a bag and locked it away. When the suspect got out on bail a week later, he retrieved the device, which was dead, quickly recharged it, downloaded the information to his computer, and supplied the information to his attorney. His attorney was able to use the recordings specifically to show a bias on the part of the officers and was eventually able to persuade the district attorney to drop the charges. This is pretty scary because police officers being recorded without their knowledge could lead to some pretty dangerous circumstances. Cameras like this could also be dangerous in the context of bringing them into a secure environment or an environment such as a locker room at a gym. No one would know that this is a camera. So it's important for us to pay really close attention to electronics when they're around us. While these two keychains and devices might look the same, they're actually quite different. The one on the left is the new one I just received that records in 720p high definition video. As you can see on the back, it's stamped number 18, while the one on the right is not stamped at all. The one on the right has a traditional mini USB, while the one on the left, the new one, has a high definition digital output. While these two devices look the same, the one on the left records in a much higher quality H.264 high definition video, while the one on the right is a much lower quality low definition. The one on the right was bought off of Amazon.com for $10. The one on the left was obtained from eBay directly from China for $35. The one on the right was delivered the same day with same-day Amazon shipping, while the one on the left took about two weeks to arrive from China. So those are the two differences between these two devices. Um, again, they're about the same weight, they feel about the same, the only visible difference is their inputs. Here we are testing out the high-definition camera number 18. This is actual footage from the camera shot at night out my window. There's a little bit of discoloration. You could also tell in the audio that there's some sort of skipping. I'm having some general trouble with the camera, including the fact that I can't seem to change the date and time. I've tried different tag files, I've tried different utility tools, but I just can't seem to get this unit to accept the date and time change. It worked fine on my lower definition camera, but my higher definition camera just simply wouldn't take it. Here, the second clip was taken by one of my students during my class. This is me lecturing in my information security class. One of the things I find about this camera is people have a hard time lining it up when they use it. You could tell the student had a hard time keeping me center. Finally, we have a picture taken with the number 18 high definition. And this is a picture of two of the people I work with at John Jay College. Join me in a future video. I'll put the link right over here up in the corner when I film it. Join me in a future video when I take one of these apart because the parts inside here are pretty cool and we can make a lot of really cool hidden cameras out of the guts of one of these. And being that we can get them for $10 a piece, it's actually a pretty good deal. My name is Adam Want. I'm a professor and technologist at John Jay College of Criminal Justice, which is part of the City University of New York. I hope you enjoyed the review of this mini spy camera keychain. Subscribe or like my feed for further updates. Have a nice day.